All right. Uh, hello, everybody, for Meet uh, the Expert series for Rebrand Bag. I today have Keith Townsend. Did I say that right? You said it right, Harry. Awesome. At CTO Advisor? At CTO Advisor. Perfect. So I don't know if you've seen these videos, but what I basically like to do is just give uh, people an introduction to how you started your career and who you are and how did you move around and what your decisions were. So don't be shy. Tell me about how you got into IT. <laughs> I think I've, I've, I've heard you in an episode of Gig Whispers a long time ago, maybe like in 2013 or so. So I know a little of the backstory. Okay. But go ahead and, and give us a, a good rundown. So if you haven't listened to the Geek Whispers episode, which Geek Whispers is still there. People can go back and listen to it. Uh, I've always loved technology. You know, a lot of the a lot of the stories in our community are similar, where people, you know, got their first Commodore C64 you're at a certain age, or, you know, in the case of some of the younger folks, they might have gotten their first Tandy 1000 or PC compatible. And as a hobby, uh, we fell in love with technology. So I'm no different in that sense. Uh, but I are we talking like, Typing the games from the yeah, like magazine. literally taking taking a book, uh, having a uh, 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 the gorilla the mask. Yeah, like the <laughs> magazine, the back in the magazines, there used to be uh, cold samples. Yeah, and you take those cold samples and literally, you know, this was the GitHub of the day. Yeah, uh, and and <laughs> type the the code in from the back of the computer magazines, and you oh you have a game. Mm -hmm. So it, it was uh, a very inefficient way to share code, uh, but I. Spent a few years not in IT. You know, I didn't get into IT until my mid twenties. Uh, up until then, I uh, cleaned hotel rooms. I was a janitor. I worked in uh, hotel reservations for a large. No kidding. Uh, yeah, for a large. Did, did you go to college? I did not go to uh, college initially. Okay. The, I had uh, actually uh, graduated from high school here in the U.S. at an early age, a year early, at sixteen. Uh, then. Uh, Completely no direction, and for the next uh, uh, nine, almost nine years, did stuff completely outside of IT. Uh, I only had a, you know, maybe a few uh, junior college courses. Uh, then I was get really determined around Y2K. I'm like, you know what? I'm going to get a job in. You were hearing this buzz that people were. Yeah, like I, I think I can do this. So like I got a, I had I applied for computer operator jobs, which were just, you know, changing tapes and mm -hmm. whatever. I didn't get any of those. And doing it's it's kind of hard for your first IT yeah, job like to get hired. Yeah, it's, especially when you have no formal training. Like yeah. I was a, I classify myself as a power user, but I definitely wasn't an IT guy. My first job was working the help desk uh, for a, uh, a small software company that provided uh, exchange data to uh, traders, to commodity traders, and it was working the third shift. Uh, I just, you know, you need basic computer skill, they trained you on the software, and you did support. Mm -hmm. Great thing about working third shift, you can read a lot of books, Yes. and you can do a lot of studying. Yes. Uh, I got my MCSC uh, wow. after about a year and a half, about a year. So you were yeah. motivated. You were, you were, you were motivated. not thinking yeah. this is I just had, another job. Hey, you were like, kids. I want to get, oh, yeah, you I already had, 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 had yeah, to. Yeah, I had three was this all in Chicago? I know you were so living in Chicago right yeah, now. Yeah, this, this, this was all in Chicago. So, you know, and then three from kids there, in, a, in an expensive city, I get you. Three kids in an expensive city. So it was, uh, it went from uh, there to, I mean, literally, you know, the, me working the third shift, my wife working the first shift. Uh, we switch off. Uh, she watched the kids at night. I watched the kids during the day. Wow. And then, uh, we, we were very fortunate in that way that I could uh, study and, and during that time you, period. You, you mentioned, or is it, is, are you guys both in the same company or is it completely? Completely different okay. company. But, just, but still, just a, yeah, you made the shifts work. The, she was still in the, so we just made the shifts work so we didn't have to pay daycare. Okay. It was uh, those were those early days were rough, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So uh, then uh, you you don't like it when people say they don't have time. <laughs> no, I can't like <laughs> Listen, you make the time. <laughs> I, I was just talking about that. Uh, I I do not like it when people. You know, I understand it. Uh, yeah. We not everyone um, has that same. One, I love technology. Yeah. You know, it was a hobby, and I got paid to do it. I, mean, I when I got my first IT job, I couldn't like a lot of us. I, 
they're paying me to do this. Yeah. Like, it's just, this is easy. Yeah, this, this is, is easy. easy. <laughs> like, this is this is way easier than cleaning toilets mm -hmm. or getting hair off the ground. This is really good stuff. Mm -hmm. So uh, that's how it all started. So help this job. You got you were motivated. You got your MCSA, MCSA, MCSE, MCSA. I think it was uh, back then. It was MCP was the 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 entry level. Microsoft when, when you, certified when you professional. Got, when you got that search, you uh -huh. said, "Okay, now I'm gonna get, make the big bucks." Right? Yep. I said, well, I'm, "Now I'm an expert." Like, yeah. I had no clue <laughs> at how big this industry was. I got like, uh, you know, what was a really tough test is uh, the Microsoft uh, OS test for Windows 95 was really hard. I later on took the uh, NT40 or the uh, Windows 2000 test, the workstation test. Easy. I'm like, well, what is this? <laughs> like, this is, I didn't know this. this is really easy compared to the Windows 95 test was pretty tough. Okay. So I, I thought I was like, I was like, man, I'm the stuff, but mm -hmm. yeah. So did you, what did you do then? So I did, got, did you actually go and knock on your boss's door and say, I got, I got a cert? No, I the. I did kind of knock on my boss's door and say, I have a store and uh, mm -hmm. Sophia jo Jonas, I I'll, I'll forever remember her name because one, I was an hour late to the interview oh, okay. and she still gave me the job, which I was super appreciative of. Uh, and she said, congratulations, that, that's great, basically. <laughs> uh, but it did open up the door, especially this is 1999 and Y2K is knocking on the door and people and companies needed people that understood technology. So I took my uh, first job at the Chicago Tribune, my second job in the Chicago Tribune, working the help desk, got, uh, continued to get certifications. I got introduced to Novell Netware. I okay. uh, got my CNE before I got my MCSE mm -hmm. and uh, became a network administrator at the uh, systems network administrator at the Chicago Tribune, which okay. was my first so, so you got off the real phones? job. I you got, got off the phones, phones which, is, first which is, is a lot of, of, of times we, we have to, I think Tim Davis is famous for saying that if you didn't go through that rite of passage of, of taking the phones, you really didn't get yeah, the hard really, way in. You, you didn't really, you didn't really earn it. But once you get into that system administrator job and you're more into the thought process of it, and more like an engineering role where you're thinking requirements and all these mm -hmm. things, it's a much, much fun, more fun role. So, yeah. how, so how long did that take and what, what path did you take? So, you know, I learned over the next few years, I learned one of the hardest lessons I've ever learned in my life. One of. It takes 10 years to get 10 years of experience. Yeah. <laughs> like, no matter how smart you are, and I thought I was pretty bright back then, mm -hmm. but no matter how smart you are, you can't accelerate. Uh, you can have 10, 10 uh, Howard Marks likes to say, there's a difference between having 10 years of experience, and then there's, a, there's uh, having 10 years of one year of experience. So you have to, you know, advance your career, but you can't, uh, you can't, you can't fake ten years of experience. So I, I, I did a lot of like dumb things in my career. Like I, the four years in, three or four years can, in. Can you remember your the first time you you, you caused a resume generating event, or you thought it was going to be a resume generating event? I do remember the first time I created. It was after I got my first kind of settled, grown up. I was my title was network engineer. But I did. I still did systems administration. Yeah. So we had a uh, Lotus Notes, Dell uh, Power Edge server, and I wanted to show my brother how uh, easily uh, how enterprise hardware worked, and you could uh, pull a drive and it would rebuild. So I pulled a drive in a production uh, note server. And I can mm -hmm. tell this story because yeah. this, this was 15 years yeah. ago and I can't get refired. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, the, uh, <laughs> I pulled Jeez. the drive in the production uh, uh, note server, the production note server, and it was RAID 0. Ooh. Okay, so that's, that's, that's not fair that they fire you for that. I right. did not get fired okay. because I never told my boss yeah. that I pulled the drive. <laughs> I just said the drive failed. Yeah. And I lied. And the, no, the, but, but the truth is, it was going to happen. In the RAID 0, it oh, was yeah, going to happen at the, some point. So it was either me manually forcing it to happen uh -huh. or at some point it happened. Yeah. I did not build the server. Yeah. To, to, you you were like, fully expecting RAID 5, yeah, RAID I was, 10. I was, yeah. I was, oh, this is RAID 5. I mean, it was the production. These was the, this was the note server that executives used. So one stupid move on my part, but yeah. two, whoever configured the the server yeah. first was, you know, yeah. that that was the first 
I have many. I, I, but that I, was the first. I would have loved to to be on uh, on the room when you see a guy saying, "Hey, what, how about we make this server at rate zero? Yeah, that was that was. I I don't know. I I I have no idea what even prompted the guy to yeah. even. No notes. I. I, I used to manage Node servers, and those things were heavy, write and, and read servers. So yeah. I, I can I can understand why he thought it was a good idea, <laughs> but no. <laughs> I can't even think why he thought it was a good idea. Oh, I like it's, it's, it's the, the most way, most, per perform. most performant uh, yeah, raid, but yeah, the yeah. problem is you're 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 done. done SOL, yeah, right? So, <laughs> you know, the, uh, it, that was probably the eye-opening experience where I realized I I don't know an awful lot mm -hmm. yet. So, you know, I, yeah. I, the, it takes 10 years to get 10 years of experience. A, an experienced guy would have never done that in the first place, yeah. and an experienced guy would have checked to make sure that the, that the, that the one of the most critical servers in the infrastructure is configured correctly. Yeah. Well, and that, and hap that happens a lot when, when someone comes into a role and somebody else kind of right. shows them. There's which no is, documentation. Which is a lot right. how sysadmins yeah. admins yeah. learn. They sit down with the guy and they kind of explain, and here yeah. you go, and you have to assume a lot of things sometimes. And then not even that. My, uh, my wife always found it interesting that, you know, one of the things we don't have, you know, you do V Brown Bag, which is great. You know, it's this formalized group of, you can find mentors in yeah. the V Brown Bag community. You can do a lot. But there's not a lot of that in our industry. So when you take a new job, my wife was like, oh, where's, what's the training for the job? Like, there's, there's no, yeah, you, there's yeah. no training. You'll be lucky if there's a There's some, docu <laughs> there may be be some documentation, but there's no training. Training is you start doing things. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Training is that, you know, they actually create a VLAN and you go create a VLAN. Yeah. Yeah. So you mentioned 10 years system and network administration. What was the next step? So the next step was uh, actually the recession hit. That, that, that is a uh, great point of, I had been taking uh, classes up to this point to get my degree because I had, I had gaps in my capability. Then as a minority, I had gotten advice that I really need to get a degree to if I want to go further in technology. So I had, uh, I'll, it was the perfect storm of things. Uh, I lost my, uh, I, got, I got laid off from the job that I was on. Actually, the company folded, so it's not even laid off, it was just no job. Uh, I had just graduated from uh, college. I had some personal stuff going on. My, my uh, dad had just passed away, and I, I was unemployed for like 10 months. And uh, I've never considered moving outside of Chicago, because Chicago, who would want to move outside of Chicago? It's awesome. And I got a job offer to go work at Lockheed Martin as a uh, systems engineer and eventually as a solutions, the not even solutions architect, the chief architect for uh, the program that I worked on at uh, Lockheed Martin. So that was my first time, you know, kind of that's, putting on that's the That's a big very different kind of organization yes. and level of seriousness and documentation and process and all these things. I learned how to become a systems engineer. Uh, you graduate. You definitely yeah, graduate. Yeah, yeah, it's a bar above. Yeah, I, 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 want, the one thing that Lockheed Martin taught me how to do is how to be a engineer proper. Like they don't see, Lockheed didn't see as uh, they gave you the systems engineer title. They didn't see a difference between the discipline of IT systems engineering and, and a avionics. airplane avionics yeah. systems engineer. It was the same. You took the same approach oh, to that's problem super cool. solving. That's super so, cool. Yeah, that was, it was super challenging, but super cool at the same time. Yeah. Okay. So you were this architect level person. Mm -hmm. Fast forward, when did CTO Advisor come in? Because so, that has to be the best handle, the Twitter handle ever. <laughs> <laughs> so I get, uh, so when you get moved into an architecture role in Lockheed Martin, it's not a systems engineer role. You kind of get this proper delineation. You know, Lockheed Martin, we both work for VMware, and VMware is an engineering culture. Mm -hmm. So we have titles like staff, uh, senior staff engineer, or principal engineer, which is a very high career level. Lockheed Martin had the same thing. So if you took the architecture route versus the engineer route, two very divergent paths. Architects were more like project managers, uh, uh, Framework. Responsible for the, the final the, outcome the, the, right. over uh, five years. Exactly. So, uh, what actually happens though is that your technical skill for, unless you just have a passion for doing technology as a hobby, your job takes you away from the technology per se. 
So I found myself, you know, a little less technical. And what compounded it is PwC came knocking at my door. At Price Waterhouse Coopers. I became a management consultant, which is definitely not technology. Yeah. Uh, it's looking now, at management consultant talking to managers, people managers, or was it also technology related? So it's uh, still in, in, it's, uh, in the IT org, let's say that way. So it's, uh, it can be in the IT org, but typical uh, project that difference, I think it's important to highlight the difference between projects you get from like a VAR versus a management consultant firm. Yeah. firm. A VAR would say, okay, we're going to deploy uh, SAP, so we need feet, uh, people on the ground to stand up servers, uh, to provide infrastructure, install apps, to, conf to write applications, etc. So that, you know, that's tremendous uh, deep technical skill. PwC, the types of challenges we would get would say would be, hey, we were breached. We're a Fortune 500 credit card processor. We're breached. The car brands are telling us if we don't pass our next audit, that uh, they're going to take away our accreditation yeah. and we'll be out of business. Mm -hmm. Fix it. <laughs> okay. Come, that, come to my company and fix it. Come to my company and fix it. So that's, you know, that's technology, that's processes, processes. it's uh, Understanding the audits. It's, it's, it's negotiating with the auditors. Yes, a lot, a it, lot. It, it is a lot. So that is the, that, that was the world I was, so there was definitely a technology component. So you know PCI DSS real well? Yeah, yes, <laughs> yes, I do. I actually do. Yeah. Unfortunately, I do, yes. Yeah. <laughs> so, you know, it was those types of problems. It, we're, we're a big Fortune 100, 200, uh, pharmaceutical medicine uh, 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 enterprise, yeah. enterprise, mm -hmm. and we're splitting into two Fortune 200 companies. Yeah. Come help us separate yeah. our IT operations. Yes. So and, and those types in, of In my challenges. previous role, we acquired. We were acquired. We had to pass PCI DSS. PCI DSS was one of the few things that actually made money be spent in the right. company. And we will also get consultants that would say, "This is how you want to organize your IT." Uh, and I'll, I'll, I, I, I do get that side. So how did you learn all this? It was, it, was it all coming from, from Lockheed the culture? Or so does part, Park Price Waterhouse Cooper help you? So part of it was mm -hmm. the culture of what I learned at Lockheed, mm -hmm. the, the, the discipline of uh, uh, systems engineering, mm -hmm. the uh, PwC uh, was early on in rebooting their technology consulting. So a lot of that was us learning it as we, as we, as we grew while having the discipline of an audit and compliance firm behind yeah. you and business consultants to help guide through the project process. Mm -hmm. So at the end of that, you, you emerge from the end of that, you know, what am I? Am I an architect? Am yeah. I a management consultant? Am I a systems engineer? I'm none of the three. The lowest rank you're talking about in those kind of positions is director. So, yeah, so, so the, like, yeah, director is the lowest, literally the, the, the lowest, you know, is the lowest level that you're, you're talking to. So who am I advising? If I start a consultant thing, who mm -hmm. I, am I advising CIOs? Well, I'm a little bit too technical for a CIO. What's left? Hey, I'm, I'm advising CTOs. CTO advisor. So I know you were independent for a while. So uh -huh. tell me about that. Was was that? I know. I, I can tell you're not afraid of taking risks. Right. right. How did that go from PwC to? Did, did, was that literally going from PwC to? No, I spent uh, I spent uh, two years at Advi as a uh, architect, infrastructure architect for SAP. That title, you can use that title loosely in both senses because I'm no longer deep. <laughs> technically in infrastructure technology. I'm also not deep in SAP, but I have these business skills that give yes. me the capability. And that's the thing with ARPs is that yeah. you have to be, you have to understand the business so well to actually implement it properly. Yeah. Exactly, so my internal clients were the VP of uh, business services, et cetera, et cetera. So I was basically a liaison between the business and the uh, technology group, mm -hmm. but I was embedded in the technology group. Uh, did that for a couple of years, and uh, frankly, got bored. The you know after the first year, year and a half, of where I did the heavy lifting and transforming uh, SAP for that environment, super fun. Uh, but it's enterprise technology. You know, you work for a customer side; it goes in cycles. You yeah. spend a year, year and a half working really, really hard, and then you spend maybe the next year or two uh, keeping the lights on. Yeah. 
not not completely uh, interesting. So me and my wife talked, and uh, I said, you know what? I've always wanted to do this 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 management consulting thing on my own. This seems like a pretty good, pretty time in life to to give it a shot. Yeah. So uh, CTO advisor, the company was born. And I know that when I first heard of you. I think it was because of whispers and, and these things, but I immediately found that you had a lot of uh, blogs and video production. Uh -huh. Like you, were, you embraced the social media early on in, when you started your company. Right. So tell me about that strategy. So I, uh, I love, I love content. I love consuming content. I love creating content. You know, uh, you do V Brown Pick, so you know how important that content is for people in their careers. Just how, you know, the hours of, from when I was a kid and I took the cold snippets out the book and, and typed them manually into the computer. I, mm -hmm. I appreciate the people who took the time to write the code for the book. Yeah. And uh, I wanted to give back. So the initial, you know, I was virtualized geek at first. Yes, so the, yeah, the initial idea was, you know, virtualized geek, I'll just, like content like everybody else creates. Uh, so so let's, let's, let's dial back into that a okay. little bit. Did you start saying, I want to become a blogger? I never, so this is really interesting. I never said I wanted Because this, this initial part of feeling out the, the, the world and the universe and figuring out what works and where you want to go. So I, I found that while I enjoy the results of writing, I didn't like writing, mm -hmm. uh, wasn't very good at it. Uh, but I also found the side effect that blogging opened up a lot of doors from a career sp perspective. Like a lot of conversation. Like all, every job that I had from Lockheed Martin to now was supported by the fact that I was a blogger. Like I would never, I would not have gotten any of those jobs unless I blogged, okay. which was funny. So uh, when did you start blogging? Uh, 2012, I think, 2011, okay. 2012. So, so after, this was after Lockheed Martin. Mm -hmm. what, I, what really got me to thinking about the business, business aspect of it is that uh, people who I really looked up to at the time and still do, I didn't know them at the time, Howard Marks, Stephen Foskett, uh, did a podcast with John Troyer on uh, the VMware Communities podcast. And they talked about what it would take to become like a, a professional influencer. How do you become Howard Marks? This, is, this a, is the evangelist era. Yeah, this was the evangelist era. era. And I, you know, from that time, this was maybe in 2013. Yeah. And I thought, I'm like, man, I would really love to do like this for a living, but I just mm -hmm. don't want to work for a vendor. Mm -hmm. how do, how do, and I spent the next four years trying to figure out the formula like how do I do that yeah. and I the, what I thought with the CTO advisor is that if I start a uh, management consulting front firm which all of them fail because you can't do individual management consulting it just doesn't work unless you have a really uh, yeah, big role of day. Yeah, the, the so I said you know what if I did a content management business that it was also a management consulting firm. Mm -hmm. So I have two different sources of revenue. Yeah. So I have a much larger, in my mind, mm -hmm. uh, chance of, of, yeah. of succeeding. The, when the management consulting thing was lacking, the uh, content management would why basically sell, for lack of a better term, sell my influence yeah. to uh, vendors. Yeah, and, and one thing that I remember from, from when, when I fir first heard you as the CTO advisor, I was like, Okay, let me go check what he does. <laughs> what's, what's his credentials, right? right? Uh, obviously, CDO Advisor is a very coveted name, right? Yes. So I went in there and I started looking at your content and I started looking at a lot of the things you were pointing out and I said like, well, he does know his stuff. <laughs> so it's very important that That's people were able yeah. to, to yeah. check your background, right? You know, I was... I, I was uh, I, I will do the panel after I finish uh, talking to Ariel on, 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 on video though. But thanks a lot, Mark. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> that that was a uh, it was it, people uh, took it a certain way when I changed the name my name to mm -hmm. from Virtualized Geek to CTO advisor. They were like, oh, oh, yeah. really, <laughs> really? But to your point, you know, once you know you get the Lockheed Martin label behind, you get the Lockheed Martin brand behind, you get PWC. the PWC brand behind you. You know, you you can't really 
Mm -hmm. uh, and then to your point, you know, you you put out the content. It's not read as much as the Virtualized Geek. Like Virtualized Geek, the the site is still up, and it still kicks the butt out of the CTO advisor from a page view yeah. perspective. But the CTO advisor stuff really gets a lot of uh, high high level attention. Yeah, well, and it's also a thing where I remember anything that was being talked about in the community. You make a video. Remember seeing a video from you for, for the imposter syndrome, for example. Yeah. So, so having that person that was out there putting themselves out there and giving all this, you know, their their thoughts on this, was when I said I totally get what this guy's doing. I totally get that he's building his his own brand, but he's also helping the community. It's 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 a win-win situation. It's, I it's love those. It's, it's it's been a win-win situation. We're here at the uh, CCV mug. We're both. VMware employees, you you spoke. I didn't. I, I don't have a speaking uh, uh, engagement here. You, you do taking, now at lunch. Yeah, yeah. I, <laughs> evidently, I do now at lunch. But, but I came here because I love the community. I get when I give back to the community, the community gives back to me. So yeah. it's a great relationship. So finally, now that we're we're getting to this part of your career, that you joined VMware a month, two months ago. Two months. And. Tell me about how that decision came in, because I, th I, I believe I saw somewhere that you said one of the big things was that you didn't have to let go of the CTO advisor, right. you could still do it. So the CTO advisor, for the most part, was a, anybody in our, most people in our industry would be very happy with what the CTO advisor had become. CTO advisor wasn't what I, what it had became was basically what you saw on video, was me creating content and selling that content in whatever form or fashion, whether it's sponsorships or outright uh, white papers or whatever. Uh, it was my dream job from 2013. Yeah. But my dream job was actually to maybe 40% content and 60% talking to customers. Interaction. Interactions is actually talking to customers. CTO advisor was 95% uh, creating content. Yeah. And that's simply not something that uh, we wanted to do. Uh, my wife and I started the business together. We had a vision for it. And to pivot away from that was going to take a significant investment. We could have uh, kept going along with the CTO advisor, or we, can, we could make the decision to do something else. And one of the promises that I made to my wife was that I, would, uh, I, would, I had no problem selling out and going to a vendor because vendors do pay well compared to customers and VARs and whatever else. I did, would not have a problem selling out going to a vendor uh, if she uh, helped me start the CTO advisor and it didn't turn out to be what, we, yeah. what it turned out to be. And it's very important to have those expectations set out at the beginning, at right? At the beginning, yes. And you know what? I like where I ended up in this whole journey. Mm -hmm. VMware, as you... You know, you, you mix the Kool-Aid, I drink it, so, you know, you, uh, <laughs> well, it's a pretty good combination. It, you, have, you have to remember that VMware is a pretty special company. VMware it's, is a, it's a, it's a... It's a unique culture. It's, um, it's also a very... You're not micromanaging VMware. No. People, people really trust that you will do what's right, mm -hmm. and they let you be you. And yeah, that's I didn't, an amazing I, thing. I didn't... Hopefully, I won't get in trouble with it, but I don't think I will. I didn't tell my manager I was coming down from Chicago to Cincinnati today yeah. to do... Uh, By the way, my up. manager approves. Completely yep. says, you know, I'm, I'm only used 60% in my current role, hoping that it goes to 100. But he said, if you want to go one day and, and do it, and they're literally, VMUG is paying me for, to, for me to be here, it's not VMware. Go ahead. Yeah. This, is, this is what we do. This is how we represent our company. Yeah, I, I'll, I'll, you know, 100% transparency. I, I, I pay for my flight down, but I'll do a couple of expenses for like cabs or whatever that, because, you know, there is value. There, there's absolutely value to VMware to this. So, uh, but that's the culture, yeah. and that's okay. Yeah. What I also explain a lot to people when they ask me, "Why, why do you, why are you uh, like so happy to go to VMware and stuff?" And I said, I always say, "Listen, number one, I was a VMware leader. I know how tough it is <laughs> on the other side to get right. these events going, mm -hmm. and I always know that it, I really appreciate it when someone comes and helps and makes the event better. And second, VMugs are really the gateway for a lot of first-time administrators." To get into the bigger and nicest parts of the community. Yes. It so, so this is our premier event, you know, especially user guns. Yeah. Yeah. All right, Keith. I've had a lot of fun here about your trajectory. I think I've met you uh, quite a lot more than I had before. Anything else that you want to add to the camera before we sign off? Uh, you know what? The give, give us some advice, for example. The. So we were almost done with the interview, and sadly my phone ran out of battery. So. 
we are going to do again. You were talking about how you don't want, you don't have to follow other people's careers to the letter. All right, so it's great because now Mark May, Tim, Tim, which Tim are you? Smith. You see squared or Tim Smith one? Prime. Tim, Tim <laughs> Prime is that Tim Smith uh, from Tim Tet's thoughts so is at the table, and the community has a lot of flavors. Like we all have taken very different career paths. So you don't have to look at the CTO advisor, you don't have to look at Ariel, you don't have to look at Tim or Howard Marks or and say that if my career doesn't follow this path, then then I'm doing something wrong. Yeah. Or if I'm if I don't sacrifice valuable time with my family, then I I won't make it. A lot of my career decisions were driven by my family and what I uh, in my specific family situation, I could be you know some big deal manager within an organization but i made career decisions based on my family and my own uh personal health health and that is probably the most important advice i can give you is that don't sacrifice your career above the things that are truly important to you if your career is the most important thing to you then have at it but uh don't remember what yeah don't be before. scared yeah don't don't be scared to say no yeah. Uh, when it doesn't meet your own uh, personal goals. Okay. And lastly, well, I had a great time getting to know you better. Uh, how can people find you? You can find me on Twitter at CTO Advisors The Handle. We talked about how you know incredibly bold okay, that man. was to, to <laughs> take that. And you can find the blog at thectoadvisor.com. Love it, love it. Thank you so much. Thanks, Ariel.